The Bible says to love your neighbor and your wife. And if you do, things will work out good. Find out how on the next Good News program. The program you're about to watch is part of a free series we're making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled A More Excellent Way. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and stream the video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hi, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're teaching a series on love, walking in love. I've entitled it A More Excellent Way. It's the best way to live life. We've been examining some areas of concern. We've been, I said it's like being in a doctor's office, being examined. We're looking at different areas that may be uncomfortable. <laughs> you know when the doctor says you may experience some discomfort. You know something's going to hurt really bad. And so there's, some di there's a little bit of discomfort ex associated with examining our love walk. There are areas that we could improve in, but there could be areas that are really causing problems that we're totally unaware of. It's important that we see how important love and walking in love is. Nothing makes it more clear to me than this scripture. We read this in the last program. I don't want to start with this. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 9. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no cause for stumbling. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And so that is a, a warning to us and, and really an, uh, an encouragement of how important it is to walk in love. By not loving people, if we react in hatred and bitterness and strife, we are clouding our own minds, our ability to hear clearly. Spiritual things won't work right for us when we are caught up in, uh, in, in this type of lifestyle. Jesus said, and this is not a suggestion, it's a commandment. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I've loved you, that you also love one another. By this will all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. So John is telling us what happens when we don't practice this. Now it's not God out to get us. It's not God trying to get even with us. It's just simply your spiritual life does not work properly when you're not walking in love. A step out of love is a step into darkness. We were not born again to walk in hatred and strife and envy and rudeness and anger. We really were born again to walk in love. And if we don't do that, it does affect our spiritual lives. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, when you stand praying, when you come to pray to God, forgive if you have ought against any. He's saying, look, you have complete control over who you forgive and who you don't forgive. So I'm telling you, if you're going to pray to me, God is the ultimate forgiver. He said, if you're going to come to me and pray, then you forgive if you have anything against anybody. It's kind of hypocritical for us to hold, uh, you know, faults and failures against people when God has forgiven us of all of our faults and failures, and we have done a whole lot more to transgress His commandments, to offend God, than anyone has done to offend us. So if God can forgive us, He's saying you're going to have to forgive other people. And if you don't, it's going to hinder your prayers. There are people's prayers that are being hindered. There's wisdom and direction that people are not receiving because they are not walking in love. And I can't make it any clearer than that. And it's not that God's making you pay. It's just that spiritual things in our kingdom do not operate properly when you're not keeping the one most important commandment. Notice this. 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, Husbands, likewise dwell with your wives with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. 
that is very, very applicable. We are talking about, first of all, Jesus said, if you don't forgive someone, you're, when, when you come and pray, you need to forgive. Obviously, it's going to affect your prayer life. Number two, if you don't walk in love, you're in darkness, and it's going to, it's going to be hard for you to walk in wisdom and light. You're walking in darkness. And here he says that if you don't relate properly to your wife, your prayers can be hindered. So this isn't God getting anybody. These are the consequences of not walking in love. It opens the door to confusion, to, uh, to sickness and disease. It opens the door to just, just general you know, stagnation when it comes to spiritual things. He's saying you can't just live any way you want and treat people any way you want to treat them. I don't know if you understand this or not. If you had children, if you have children... And you had somebody come over to your house and abuse your children and mistreat your children and yell at your children and treat your children the way maybe they were treated or they treat their children. And they really treat your children badly. And then they come to you asking you for a favor. You're going to have a problem, aren't you? You are going to have a problem with that person. In fact, if, if people don't love our children the way we do, we have a problem with them. They don't even have to do anything bad. If, they don't, if they're not excited about them like we are, then we have a problem with people. And God's saying the same thing. He says, don't, you can't go around hating and, and uh, abusing and chastising and resenting and, and being rude and treating people any way you want and then come to me after you've mistreated my children and ask me and pray to me, things are not going to go well. And that's what he's saying is you have got to carry this. He's not saying you have to be perfect, but there are areas of life that we are just being motivated and giving in to these, these emotions, the, the baser desires, and we're saying things we shouldn't say, doing things that we shouldn't do to people, and, and, and it's affecting, it can affect our prayer life. And here he says that you need to, relate properly with your with your spouse with your wife or your prayers could be hindered and i think this is worth mentioning husbands dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as a weaker vessel now he's saying the wife is a weaker vessel physically <laughs> if you if you're married you know what i'm talking about physically they may be weaker in the fact in the sense that they can't lift as much weight and and whatever but we all know um, that uh, in other areas, women are, <laughs> are equals, are superior. So he's just talking about the weaker vessel, which would be the physical body, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. And if you've reduced your relationship to your wife down to a physical contest, like, I'm right because I'm bigger, <laughs> you have missed the point. You, you need to start back at lesson one and go through this a more excellent way from the beginning because it's not all about might makes right. And if you're married, you know this. What he's saying is, look, you've got to give understanding. You've got to learn how to work it out. You can't be constantly mad at your spouse or your prayers are going to be in. And this goes for women too. You can't constantly resent and be angry and nagging and upset and unhappy with your spouse without it hindering your prayers. We have got to get it right at home. And I, I am not a marriage counselor. I don't pretend to be. This church years ago invited my wife and I to do a marriage seminar. And we, you talk about a fish out of water. I, she went with the women. I went with the men. And uh, it, I wasn't asked to do that again. Let's just put it that way. So I, I'm, this is not my area of expertise. But I'm telling you, prayer is and, and, and relating to God is. And you got to get it right at home. If, if you're one of those people that's nice to everybody else and you're really irrit irritated and irritable at home, shame on you. You need to practice the love of God. Get into the love scriptures and, and begin to... You know, begin to, to uh, feed on the love scriptures and watch how the love of God begins to dominate and become more and more part of your everyday life. It should be seen at home. These things shouldn't just work at church. They shouldn't just work with people that love you. That's easy. 
It, they ought to work with people that you're around all the time, people who know you best. There ought to be, uh, obviously, you're going to have some confrontations. And I'm not trying to make, you know, myself out as a saint. Um, I'll, just, I'll just admit that there are times when my wife will say something that's totally out of line and she pushes me beyond, you know, pushes me and, and, and uh, does things that obviously no sane human being would do and whatever, and I react, I overreact, okay? I, I'm, I very seldom do it unprovoked, but, 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 but when she says certain things and I say certain things, and how many of you know this? Have you ever learned this lesson that you can win the battle but lose the war? I, I, I could write the book on that. You see, in my household, I'm the talker, and I can win the argument. Do you know how frustrating it is to win the argument and lose the war? That's my life. And so you, you have to learn how to go to the Word, go to the Lord, and go to your wife. And this would help you. If some of you would just go to your spouse and say, you know what, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had the facts on my side, and I had a reason for what I did and said, and all of that, none of that matters. I was wrong. Forgive me. You know how much good that would do in your home? Do you know what that would do to your... Some of you would just... You would shock your, your spouse into silence if you did that. But you, we need to be able to do this and keep the lines of communication open at home. And that's what he said. I'm, a, I'm just surprised. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm going to read this again and how he really gets to the heart of the matter. He says, look, you need to, husbands, you need to love your wives. You, you need to give them understanding, give them space. You need to let them be who they are. And you, and, or... Your prayers will be hindered. Wow, you know, that hits where it hurts. You know, there, we all need our prayers to be effective. You can't live through this life without being able to pray and get help, supernatural help. And the, and the, the worst thing in the world is to have your lifeline cut off, is to have your prayers hindered and be ineffective. And he's saying the way to do this is not dwell together with understanding. He didn't say you're never going to have a disagreement. <laughs> Getting back to marriage, do you have uh, this, this, this real deep suspicion with these people who say, we've never had an unkind word? And I'm like, why, well, was one of you can't speak? I mean, what do you mean? We've never had a disagreement. I, I know <laughs> I knew this couple and they were, before they were married, they were dating, and they said, we've never had an argument, and they were so happy. And then it's like, boy, that all ended <laughs> once they got married. I never heard that phrase again. <laughs> That's just not realistic. We're going to have disagreements. We're going to see things differently. She'll figure out I'm right, but I don't have to be right in a wrong way. Do you understand what I mean? You don't have to be right and be right wrong because then you go back to pray and the Lord says you need to deal with oh God forgive me okay 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 but I was right I don't care if you were right you did it in the wrong way your attitude was wrong your delivery was wrong I hope you're getting this I feel extremely um, transparent right now and I want you to somebody give me an amen or an oh me or something You've got to keep it right at home. You're going, to have, you're going to have disagreements. He said, dwell with your wives with understanding. That, that really helps us normal people, doesn't it? Dwell, I can do that. You know, I can't be perfection, and I can't always see things her way, and she can't always th see things my way. We see things from a different viewpoint. But we can dwell with understanding. We can do that. I'm going to try to understand, and, and she's going to try to understand, and we can meet in the middle. You can do this. But all I'm saying is if you don't put any time or attention toward your marriage relationship, it could hinder your prayers. There's no place more valuable than to exercise this fruit of love, the God kind of love, than in your home. And you can have the love of God working in your home, even if you don't see things the same way, and even if you have disagreements at times. That's just normal. That doesn't mean that you don't have the love of God working in your home. We can dwell with understanding. We can get along. We can, you know, you don't always have to have the last word. You don't always have to put your two cents worth in. 
You can, like a good friend of mine says, you can choose your battles. There are times when, you know what, I don't agree, but there's what's the point? I don't need to weigh in on that. It's not that important. And, 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 and it's a give and take. When you try to do this with effort alone, and you don't allow the love of God to dominate and flow out of you, you're cheating yourself. You'll have so much more uh, success with this. And, and like one Christian writer said, agape love, the love of God, has never been to the divorce court. When two people learn to love each other with the love of God, they can get through anything. Of course, they're going to have disagreements. They're going to have opposition. They're going to go through times and seasons. But, you know, if both parts of the equation choose the love of God that prefers the other, that's not offended, that doesn't behave rudely, that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, you're going to make it. And not only are you going to make it, but you're going to enjoy the journey. And that's what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to fight all the time and, and try to be the one that's right and always proving your point. You don't have to live that way. It's better to let the love of God dominate and dwell with your spouse with understanding. I brought that scripture up because this scripture talks about how your prayers are hindered if that relationship's not right. In 1 John 2, we find out if we don't love our brothers, we're walking in darkness. And then in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, he says, when you pray, this is Jesus, when you come and pray, then you need to forgive if you have aught against any. That's King James. If you look that up, if you have aught, what does that mean? That means aught is any little offense. Any little problem that you have with anybody, then you need to forgive them. And in most cases, you don't even need to contact them. You can forgive them from your heart and do it right there in your place of prayer by faith and then go on and get what you need from God. It's not a big, long, drawn-out process, but it's something that does need to be done. It needs to be recognized. You know, it's, it's counterproductive for you to call someone up who doesn't know what they did to you. They don't realize that you've been carrying this, this resentment all these years. And you call them up and say, you know what, I forgive you for all that you did to me. <laughs> I forgive you for this. And I've done that before. It's so much fun to call someone up and say, you know what, I forgive you. And they're like, what? And you know, for all you, all you did, you know, I for, I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to let it go. Don't think another thought about it. But, but about what? Well, you know, those things that happened and what you said. And that's not productive. And I do it as a joke. But if it was true, it's certainly not a, a, a way to deal. You just deal with it in your own heart. Forgive them and let it go and let God accept your, your act of faith and then pray and have your prayers answered. You, there's no gain. We get no gain, no benefit out of carrying offenses along with us, carrying hurts and resentment toward people for what they've done. That does not help you at all. That doesn't help you uh, become a better person or defend yourself from what they did. It is of no value. In fact, it hinders. So Jesus said, let it go. Forgive them. And he certainly knows what he's talking about. He is the master of forgiveness. And if he tells us to do it, then we, we can do it. Listen to this uh, teaching in 1 Peter chapter 3. And this is, this is how we ought to relate to others. And In fact, I want to give you a spiritual diet. You can take these scriptures as medicine on a daily basis. Write them out. You can get my study notes there in there and you can use these scriptures as, uh, as, as supplements to your diet and they will help you. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. This is amplified. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble, never returning evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue-lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessing, praying for their welfare, happiness, and protection, truly pitying and loving them. For know this, that you've been called, that you may yourselves inherit a blessing from God, that you may obtain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection." 
That is a way to live life and a way to relate to others. These are powerful words. These are scriptures. And if you'll begin to speak these scriptures and begin to read them regularly, they will affect you. I gave you my testimony in the last program, how I was dealing with physical symptoms and I could not for the life of me. How did this happen? I believe in healing. I believe in health. And, I, and, and finally, the Spirit of God helped me take 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 daily like medicine. And lo and behold, I was cured of these symptoms that n not even the doctors could find. I did x-rays. I did an MRI. And they even did a scope. And they could not find a problem. And I applied 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 daily and sometimes twice a day. And I was cured. You could do the same thing. If you need improvement in your love walk, take these verses as medicine. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, and personalize them. Here's what I did, and, and I still do this from time to time. You've got to keep this nutrient going in your life. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Love suffers long and is kind. Well, the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart, so I have this love. So I'm going to say this about myself. So I say, I suffer long and I'm kind. I do not envy. I don't parade myself. I am not puffed up. I don't behave rudely. I do not seek my own. I am not provoked. I think no evil. I do not rejoice in iniquity, but I rejoice in the truth. I bear all things, believe all things. I hope all things, and I endure all things. Love never fails, so I never fail when I walk in love. I promise you those scriptures will have an impact in your life. They will begin to work on the inside and work on the outside. I took those scriptures for a matter of weeks and, and I had a, a symptoms that I'd had for over a year were completely cured simply by taking the medicine of God's Word and applying it. If there's any area of your life where your love walk is suffering or you've opened the door because of, of offense or or a fight, or, or a disagreement, or whatever, and it's in, in the area of love, these scriptures will help neutralize that experience in your life. Then, I like to read it from the Amplified. It's much longer. Let me read through this before we run out of time. And you can take this, too, and add it to uh, your King James or New King James Version. But this is the Amplified Version of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love endures long. You can say, I endure long, and I'm patient and kind. I never... I never am envious. I don't boil over with jealousy. I'm not boastful or vainglorious. I do not display myself haughtily. I am not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. I am not rude and unmannerly. I do not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in me, does not insist on its own right or its own way. I am not self-seeking. I'm not touchy or fretful or resentful. I take no account of the evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I do not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but I rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under everything, anything and everything that comes. I'm ever ready to believe the best of every person. My hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. I endure everything without weakening. And I never fail. I never fade out or become obsolete or come to an end. Isn't that great? That is so powerful. Those are simple words and most answers. Truth is simple. Redemption simple. It was made so that everybody could receive it. But if you'll take those words consistently, they will change your life. And I, I'd been teaching on growing and maturing in the things of God. And we did quite a bit of teaching on that, growing toward greatness and transformed. Uh, and those teaching, I, I just felt like it wasn't complete unless we talked about love, because to grow in God is to grow in love. The, the barometer that measures your spiritual growth and progress is love, not power, not gifts, but, but love. And so uh, I, I just felt like it's so important that we dealt with this topic that, um, that all of us are really required to walk in, and we all have this same capability to develop the love of God. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take these things and feed on them. Get my notes if you, need, if you need to reference it, and you can take that page and just keep it by your bed and use it every day. If you're enjoying these teachings, we are facing bills that are coming in right now for our filming for this year. We've got $20,000 worth of bills to, to pay for. 
Um, obviously, things have changed in our nation somewhat, and travel has been restricted, and it has affected our ability to raise funds in churches. But we have partners and donors out there, and you may be one of those. And I'm asking you to pray about supporting us during this time. If everybody who hears this message will do something, and go to our website and give an offering. Or, so contact us. If you'll do something, you know, we believe in the, the, the uh, principle of sowing and reaping. And if you'll sow into this, I know that it'll cause not only meet the needs here, we'll pay this, uh, this bill and uh, record these programs. And it'll also abound to you in every way. Because where you reap, you do sow. <laughs> you know, when you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. So we believe in that principle. I encourage you to pray about it. If you have some money to sow, consider us. And together, we're going to touch the world. It is a new day and a new season for our ministry. And I just thank you for being a part of it. Well, that's all the time we have. Uh, we will continue teaching on love and the love of God in the next episode. Until then, may God's best be yours. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and stream the video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. If you like the Good News program and you're being blessed by the messages that I bring you uh, every day, I could use your help. We're facing about $20,000 worth of bills to um, complete our filming for this year. And that includes all the costs for filming and editing and getting this program ready to air. Um, that's not in our budget. That's a, 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 an amount that we have to raise in other ways. Our travel has been restricted recently because of changes in our nation and our world. We could really use your help. So if you're a viewer and you, uh, you, you like this program, you believe in what we're doing, pray about helping us. We are shifting over to a fully donor and partner supported ministry. And that is a huge change for me over the years. I've always gotten my support from churches and churches that I preach in personally. And, uh, and, and I knew it was time to shift. And I believe the Lord showed me that there are enough viewers out there right now to support this ministry fully. We don't waste your money. We're not extravagant. We don't really go beyond what we're able to do at any given time. But I want to put this message out on other platforms. And in order to do that, first of all, we've got to pay this $20,000 debt. And then we're looking at other ways to get the good news program out to more people. So pray about helping us. We would love to hear from you. You can contact our ministry by phone. It's 918-749-7744 or go to my website, gregfritz.org. There's a donate button. There's also a partner page. So you can be a donor, which is be a one-time giver, or you can be a partner and give monthly, or you could be a partner who gives one gift to cover a year or two years of partnership. We, we want to make it easy for you, make, uh, make multiple levels and multiple ways that you can connect. But the bottom line is together, we're doing something new. It is a new season for Greg Fritz Ministries. It's a new day, and we are reaching more people than ever with your help. God bless you. <laughs> Until next time, may God's best be yours.